Warning, this episode contains brain food that will lead to improved emotional and social intelligence. Give us one hour and we'll help you change the way you think about happiness. Harvesting Happiness with Lisa Cypress Kamen is fresh, optimistic, and purpose-driven media that promotes well-being from the inside out. Each week, Lisa spotlights diverse trendsetters and change agents who are the greatest contemporary thinkers and doers, devoting their lives to creating a better world in which to live. Your host, Lisa Cypress Kamen, is a widely recognized applied positive psychology expert, author, documentary filmmaker, and lecturer specializing in optimal lifestyle management. Let's get to it. Here's Lisa. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are. Thanks for joining us on today's show, where you will learn about positive changes in corporate culture allowing inclusiveness, equality, and joy to reign supreme. This is a unique episode in that it was recorded on site at Menlo Innovations in Ann Arbor, Michigan. My friend, Rich Sheridan, who we've had on the show before, and his partner, James Goble, allowed me to interview some of their team members to capture what it's like to work for an organization that values and prizes happiness as part of the culture and part of what they make over at Joy Inc. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. So I'm with Dan Roman and Scott Crumry from Menlo Innovations, and they graciously offered to come in and, and talk with me about what it is like to really work within an organization that leads with joy, you know, the, how the corporate culture really affects not just the jobs that you perform, but the impact it has holistically on your lives. And as young men, feeling as though you have purpose and really are becoming self-actualized through the work that you do and the culture that you live in. So I've kind of wanted to open it up and we'll just, we'll just talk and see, sure. see what comes up. How long have you guys worked here? I've uh, been working here since January. So I've been, this is month like five, Gets just getting started. So a, a newbie, oh, a right. newbie to Menlo, yeah. yeah. And how about you? Uh, I've been here for almost five years now. Wow. I started in uh, 2014. And I want to just reiterate that within Menlo, as Rich and James mentioned, that you guys work in pairs. And at first, one of you was going to come in for the interview or to talk with me. And then it was like, well, wait a minute, we work as a pair. Can we come in together? And I was so pleased. It put a smile on my face because I think this is unique to this environment where that sort of support of team, not just individually, you know, one person to the other as business, but there's also a bond and connection that you have formed through the intimate work that you do here. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about that and coming in only a few months ago versus being here for a few years and what it was like for you coming into an environment where people have been here for a while. Sure. In terms of uh, creating a bond, I think one of the biggest things is, you know, in uh, non-paired uh, settings, your victories and your defeat are yours alone. So anytime that you succeed at something or fail at something, you have no one to share either that frustration or relation with. But in these contexts, when you're sitting next to another person, it's invigorating. It's, oh, we finally got that. We fixed that problem. We did it together. And you have someone to share it with. Or it's one of those days where, you know, you're banging your head against the wall for the whole thing. And ordinarily, it's easy to kind of get demoralized by yourself. When you've got someone else, it, it makes things a lot, a lot better. So shared victory, the, the understanding of really what goes into making these projects tick and, and it's success. Whereas if you go home and describe it to your partner or your friend, it's not quite the same. Yeah. Not I, many people, not many family and friends are excited to talk about software development. Yeah. To so talk, to talk, to talk, geek talk or tech talk. <laughs> yeah. How about for you? Yeah. I think um, one of the key things that makes men love work is again, the bonds we build with each other. And I think it can be deceptively easy for those to form, right? Because you're sitting eight hours a day next to a person working side by side. Dan and I, at this point, we've only paired for about 10 hours since he's been here. Yeah. And I can tell you yesterday, there might've been a little bit of slow slowness in the morning where we were still trying to figure out how to interact with each other. Mm. We'd be working, we'd run into a stumbling block 
we would state what we thought was happening and then ask a question. And mm-hmm. the next person would state what they thought was happening and then ask a question. And that's just sort of how those conversations progressed. Mm-hmm. And you can get to know somebody incredibly well after you work side by side with them for 40 hours in a single week. There are yeah. people here that I've worked with literally hundreds of hours side by side over five years. Mm-hmm. So this is a new pair. The, yeah. the two of you are a new pair. So you are working in other teams at Menlo prior to today. Yep. So you just were paired. This is your second day working together? Yes. So what do you know about each other thus far? Simpsons. We share an interest in The Simpsons, that's for sure. (laughs) Very important. Yeah, yeah. We've definitely been quoting a lot. Just about every pop culture reference. (laughs) One of us throws out the other one responds. See if if we can pick it up. Um, uh, You used to work in uh, landscaping at a place that's very near to the house that I purchased a couple of years ago. That's right. Um, you have two cats. I do have two cats. One of, them, one of whose names is Finnegan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So these little things about one another's lives that you say in passing as you're doing the work, mm-hmm. but there's a deepening of connection in the doing of the work. Mm-hmm. And it's this sort of cyclical, integrated, very holistic approach to doing the work. And the more that you know about one another, I would imagine the easier it is to dance in the work. Yep. Mm-hmm. Sure. Because every, every person you work with or pair with, we rotate pair partners every week. Mm. So Dan and I won't be paired Friday, I think, is actually when we switch. I think so. But we keep learning about everybody else, and it builds a very strong environment where everybody knows each other and knows when I go work with this person, my pairing style is going to shift a little bit, right? Mm. Because our personal relationship is different than the personal relationship we have yeah. with the other people here. So here at Menlo Innovations, what I gather from the time that I've spent here, the the hours, is that everybody matters. Yes. Yeah, for sure. And that that's a very different climate than your average business. Yeah. I think the thing that I would add on to that is it's not just that everybody matters, but nobody matters more than anyone else, which is something that I think happens in a lot of other business situations where I don't think any business would argue that, you know, we don't value these people or anything like that. But it's very easy to get into a, you know, kind of trapped into thinking like, well, this particular team is more critical than that team. Here, it's it's very egalitarian. Everyone everyone matters just as much as anyone else. So it's cooperation versus domination. Yeah, that's you know? for sure. That not one, there's no hierarchy of, okay, well, this is the sort of the ultimate or the power authority. Even the, the co-founders of this company feel that they are you know, in the pen, in the middle of the room with everybody else. And I really, I appreciate that. And the humor and full heartedness with which they lead. Which leads me to my next question about that. You know, prior to coming here, had you ever worked for companies that led with their hearts? No, I worked in a pretty corporate setting previously for one of my jobs. I had a couple previous jobs where it didn't feel like I was really part of a larger team. I was just sort of off doing my own thing, and that was okay. You know? um, and I came here, and you know, it took a little bit to get over that sort of mentality. Um, mm-hmm. And it wasn't until we had a project in-house that I had a bit of experience with that, that sort of domain or that, um, that technology that I really started to feel comfortable coming out of my shell and starting to become a leader. Because that's really what we want to do here is we want everybody to become a leader um, and bring their own individual value add because we all have very different backgrounds, very different experiences leading into us coming to work here. I want to hear from you, Dan, and then I'll I'll ask the next question. Sure, sure. Um, there There are jobs that I've had where I personally felt like I was in a team that was very kind of heart guided, but I hesitate to say that I've had a job where the overall organization was leading with the heart. That's how I'll I'll answer that one. And how does the contrast strike you? Like, how do you feel, as a person, your daily experience of your lives, each of you, how has it been enriched by this culture? Oh, it's it's night and day by comparison, at least for me. Like, especially coming from, like, previous kind of industry experiences, this is a very fulfilling job, I think. Like, it's not necessarily the software development. A- it's, it's not the software development yeah. aspect. It is the the culture and environment itself that is fulfilling. I think that I think that Menlo could take the culture that they have here and apply it to any other you know business model, whether it's software engineering or it's you know a CPA firm or yeah. whatever. Like that cultural idea that they have is applicable in, in every context. How about for you? 
yeah, I think it has radically changed the way I behave even with other people. I'm a very introverted person to the point where I actually didn't pass the extreme interview or the first time I did the three week here because of, uh, I just, I was very introverted. I didn't, I didn't feel comfortable adding into the team because, you know, I was very much in that college mindset of uh, don't ask questions. I'll get the answer Yeah. rather than stepping up and advocating and saying, hold on, something doesn't make sense. I need clarification. So it has definitely changed the way I, I behave. It's made me more comfortable, I think, in social settings. I have never had a job before that I didn't have to go home afterwards and complain about something. Mm. <laughs> right? And that doesn't really happen here because if, if there's a problem, I can bring it up to the team, right? If I'm having if I have feedback to give somebody, I can just go give them that feedback. And I can bring in a pair partner with me to validate the feedback I'm giving is valid. It's not just yeah. some feeling that I have. And, you know, surfacing those conversations and just bringing everything up because it doesn't help to just sort of sit on anything and let it stew, right? And actually, my family noticed that. They're like, you're not coming home frustrated. This is weird. To the point where September of last year, my sister works here now. No. Yeah, she is one of our high-tech anthropologists. Is she going to come in here, too? (laughs) (laughs) Um, That's really cool. Right now, but it's not common but it's also not uncommon so uh, we have a developer whose wife works here uh, occasionally in front office Mm -hmm. we have another developer whose wife is or uh, sorry fiance is a member of the front office Um, but significant uh, other significant other other. (laughs) partner (laughs) it's funny right because we end up enjoying our job and wanting the people around us to enjoy their jobs too and they end up joining the team yeah well, I mean, this is, you know, going back to what goes on here, this is a place where dogs and babies and partners are welcome, mm-hmm. you know, so humanity is brought into this space, yep. which then when there's a recognition of humanity and one feels seen, heard and understood, you can't help but flourish. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's the secret sauce that it goes on here. You know, this this fertile ground for your personal flourishing that then reverberates back to the work that turns out a more valuable, well-executed work product. And it's a win, 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 win for everybody, yeah. you know, for you, for the company, for the end user, the client, the client's clients. And that's how the world changes. Yeah, I think that's a good way to put it. I'm interested in the, in the nuts and bolts because never in these conversations do we talk about the product. Mm-hmm. You know, all the conversations and interviews I've been making, it's always about the process, not about the end result. Mm-hmm. And the process, like you said, is, is universal. It applies to everything. That's another contrast to draw in terms of where the, the perspective that the conversation is coming from here at Menlo is that in a lot of instances, it's very easy to get trapped into focusing exclusively on the product and just kind of having the process be about producing the, the product as fast as possible, you know, uh, as under budget as possible. But I think here the mentality is much, so, much more so about let's make the process work first, and that will in turn yeah. uh, produce products that are valuable and effective. Did you both go to school locally? Michigan State, uh, WCC, Washington Community, Community College. So, do they teach any kind of leadership strategies at schools today? The schools that you went to, some schools do, of course. So you t- to come into this environment, it was all very, very new to you that, that a corporate ethos could exist in this way that supported the greater good. Sure. Yeah. One other thing that I think is really powerful about Menlo is we don't really look at resumes. So I do not have a traditional computer science background. I took three years of welding and machining in high school, and I thought that's what I wanted to do. And I started working on my welding certificate in college, and I realized that wasn't really where I wanted to go. So I sort of refocused and I actually have, I don't have a degree at all. I took a couple of computer science courses in college, but I never finished it. I came here and I applied and they saw, so we do look at resumes to see that you have some interest in the field you're applying for, that you're not just like one day, I want to be a developer, but I, I yeah. have no experience whatsoever. But the fact that I didn't have a degree didn't hold me back from joining the team. Which is a really good point. You know, when we think about recruiting for our organizations that in the past or for many companies, it's like if you don't have, you know, you don't check all the boxes, um, you won't even be considered. And it does a disservice to so many talented, cool people that have a lot to add to a company. 
Here comes that break. We'll be right back. And that is a guarantee. To learn more about cultivating sustainable well-being at home and the office, visit HarvestingHappiness.com and explore Lisa's experiential on-site brain fitness workshops, corporate programming, and speaking engagement services. are back talking with team members over at Menlo Innovations at Ann Arbor, Michigan. We're talking about positive changes in corporate culture, allowing inclusiveness, equality, and joy to reign supreme. Let's get back to the conversation. Talk a little bit about the interview process here, because I know that there's a really unique way that you do things here that is pretty cool and exciting. So it all starts off with what we call our extreme interview. And the extreme interview is a group interview. So um, we collect all the resumes of the people who uh, said that they'd like to attend, and we invite them all back at the same time. They all come in, and they sit down at the tables, and usually there's a lead-in by Richard James sort of talking about why we're here, that this is our extreme interview, and the expectation that what we're looking for today is your kindergarten skills. We're not, avail- <laughs> we're not evaluating you on technical skills. <laughs> Do you play well with others? <laughs> Because if you think about it, our organization, if you don't play well with others, it's not going to be a good fit yeah. for us or for the person. Yeah. Right? So they use a very sophisticated system where they count the participants off, one, two, three, four, you know, for as many groups as there will be. You get a pair partner, and for the next 20 minutes, you and your pair partner focus on a task while being observed by a Menlonian, somebody who works here. And really what they're doing is they're looking at the interaction between the two pair partners. Are they actually engaging with each other? Are they making eye contact? Are they sharing the pen and paper because the exercises are done on paper rather than at a computer or anything like that? Imagine that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, really what we're looking for is those, those kindergarten skills. Yeah. So that process repeats itself three times. So at the end of the night, you will have had three different pair partners and you will have been seen by three different Menlonians, at least. Sometimes we pair if we have more Menlonians than we have groups. So the, the key thing that they're told at the beginning of the interview is, your job is to get your pair partner hired. Love that. To put the other person up. Mm-hmm. Yep. Make your pair partner look good. Yeah. It's surprising how people manage to fail when we give them the answers to the, uh, to the problem. Right. Like, if you want this, you want th- this is what you do. Exactly. Yeah. And, and somehow people aren't able to, to grok that sometimes. I think that it tie, the, the interview process ties in really well with the, the discussion we were just having about, you know, product versus process and where Menlo is putting its emphasis on process. I think our emphasis on process necessitates that we hire people who can fit into that process because the process perpetuates itself through people, through, you know, yes. employees uh, advocating for and championing and championing and you know, uh, promulgating that pro- that process. Whereas in other instances where it's about the product, that's when it turns into this, you know, this uh, uh, equation of does this person have the skill set to produce this product on their own? To follow the algorithm. Exactly. Which uh, the algorithm of this place is from the heart. Right. It's the algorithm of, of unconditional positive regard, of connection, of social and emotional intelligence. It's, it's different. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the extreme interview, All the people who observe the participants stay for another hour or so. We have dinner, and we all vote on the the people who came through the extreme interview. We give them a thumbs up, a thumb sideways, or a thumbs down, and then we sort of rank those candidates based on, again, kindergarten skills, the interactions that we saw during the the extreme interview, and we extend them one-day invites. So the one-day interview, they're brought back. There's a one-day contract, so I don't think they're an employee for the day, but they're, they're like a contract. They're official for the day. <laughs> for <Yeah>. the day. <laughs> and oftentimes they're put on actual billing projects for a real client. Wow. And that's how we evaluate their technical skills. They will pair with two people during that day, two Menlonians, one in the morning, and then uh, they'll go out to lunch with usually two or three people. We try to represent all the roles and that's their, that's their chance to ask any questions, you know, about the business or you know, what do you like about working here? What don't you like about working here? All that kind of stuff. They can get honest answers from people who are here. Like a college um, tour kind yeah, of thing. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Um, and then in the afternoon, they pair with a second person. And then at the end of the day, we again meet up and we say, what went well? Do we think this person would, would work, work out well here? 
And again, at that point, we do start taking into account technical skills, but also are they learning quickly? Because yeah. they switch pair partners midday, were they able to translate what they were doing in the morning and explain it to their next pair partner who might not have been on the project in a little bit? And so they have to bring their pair partner up to speed. That's a really interesting thing that you mentioned because it requires the the sort of intellectualization of what's going on mm-hmm. and then the ability to communicate it. Mm-hmm. Well, just because you understand it doesn't mean you can necessarily articulate it and pass on the information transfer that mm-hmm. needs to happen in order to keep moving in the way that you guys work here, right? Where you're constantly changing. Mm-hmm. Yep. So if, if we decide that we like them, we'd like to bring them back again, it moves on to a three-week interview where they essentially join the team for three weeks. We try to make sure that they have one pair partner, one or two pair partners per week. And then at the end of the week, we gather together and we give them feedback and we say, hey, here's what was going really well. Here are the things we saw you struggling with. We'd like to see you improve on this. And so we try to help our applicants cheat during the interviews because we like them and we'd like them to stay on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're investing. You know, you're investing time in these people that come in and you'd like to, you'd like, it it makes it easier on the team as a group if this person is a good fit. And I think it adds a level of perception that you don't get in your ordinary one hour interview of a panel kind of thing where you've got, you know, three or four people uh, giving you an interview and you just kind of have to potentially fib your way through it. This is a much more revealing process. You get a level of intimacy and understanding that you wouldn't otherwise get in, you know, a one hour interview or a phone screen or a technical interview. Let's go to that intimacy word, because I think that is also at the heart of what goes on here. And when we're talking about positive leadership, that um, willingness to go to that intimate place, and we're talking about sort of revealing who we are. We're not talking about romantic intimacy. We're talking about authenticity mm-hmm. and truth. Exposure. Exposure. Yeah. yeah. And the, that, the B word, right? The vulnerability. vulnerability. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the willingness to sort of allow oneself to be seen, which is the opposite of what usually happens in the dating and mating process of looking for a job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that that's something that we also, like, it's part of the, the hiring process. It's just that you have to be willing to communicate your misunderstandings because we we thrive when we when we understand, when we yes, know what's going on, yes. when, we, when we share the knowledge. And that's one of the other things, too, is that that intimacy promotes the communication that needs to happen in order for that transfer of knowledge to occur. Menlo does a great job of encouraging us to be vulnerable so we can stop being vulnerable in that way. I like what you just said. Encourages you to to be vulnerable so you can stop being vulnerable. Right. Yeah. I like the way you phrase that. I mean, you wouldn't think of it that way, but the more the more you're willing to disclose or allow yourself to be truly seen, the less scary it becomes and it turns from vulnerability to authenticity. Mm-hmm. You know? And I would argue even strength. Later yeah, on. strength. Yeah. Exactly. Strength, resiliency, mm-hmm. because things will go wrong. Mm-hmm. Mistakes will be made. Mm-hmm. There will be failures because mm-hmm. that's life. Yep. Yep. And I, I think that's something too that's that really gets at like what's unique about Menlo is is the honest acceptance of that. Whereas in other, you know, business environments, it's very much so like we must be successful all the time. Yeah. And anything less than that is a catastrophic failure. Failure is part of success at yeah. Menlo Innovations. Very much yeah. so. It, the poster's out there somewhere, which is make mistakes faster. And I, I did see that out uh, on one of the on one of the columns, I think. Mm-hmm. We've, I've had that pointed out to me during my, during my three week, you know, it was like, we want to know where your, your gaps are so we can help you fill them in. And that really, you feel that here. It's like, you know, that, that everybody's, everybody's here to make sure everybody else succeeds. Mm -hmm. And if you're not a good fit, I would, I would imagine that one is sort of sussed out pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, the, so, uh. A lot of times we'll even have people who come in, they're like, yeah, I want to work here. And they come in for their one day and they're like, that was exhausting. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. I don't want to do it every day because this just isn't me. Right? Yeah. We, we do frequently have people self-select out. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's perfectly fine. Uh, that's part of what our interview process is set up to help determine is we want to make sure that you're a good fit for us, but also that we're a good fit for you because yeah. if we're not, nobody's going to be happy. Right. <laughs> And, but it's something more than just that good fit thing. I mean, there's really that real human aspect. I keep going back to that, you know, like as if you were courting a friend or a potential mate, 
that you really want to see if you can dance together mm -hmm. because you're in it for the long haul. I think it highlights that, you know, the job search in a lot of instances is about convenience. Does yeah. this match what, what works for me at a superficial level? Whereas, like Scott's saying, like, we are interested in something that's a little bit more in depth than that. Something that's more than just, oh, this happens to work for you. This is, we want you to be excited about working with us because we're excited about working with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's a win. It's yeah. just a win all the way around. Yeah. Uh, one thing I would love for you to do is each state your names again and what you do here. Because I'm not sure. I know you stated your names, but I don't know that we got like what you do. We sure. I'm Dan Roman, and uh, I'm a software developer at Menlo Innovations. I'm Scott Crumry, and I'm a software developer at Menlo Innovations. Perfect. Thank you, guys. That was awesome. Let's take a quick pause, and we'll come right back. Did you know that happiness is actually good for your health? Happy people live longer, are more productive, and make better partners parents, and professionals. Connect with us on Facebook at Harvesting Happiness and follow Lisa on Twitter at Lisa Kamen for a daily dose of inspiration. Welcome back. Or if you're just joining us now, we're talking about positive changes in corporate culture, allowing inclusiveness, equality, and joy to reign supreme. I'm talking with team members from Menlo Innovations, where a culture of joy and happiness is as much a part of the employees as it is the products that they make and the environment in which its founders, James Goebel and Rich Sheridan, teach others how to employ this positive psychology in business to change the world. Let's get back to the conversation. So we are here at Menlo Innovations and in the background you will hear the signs of life continuing as I have the opportunity to speak with other team members here at Menlo. And the next um, team that has come in to talk with me, has dared to come in and speak with me, is Ruta and Jane. And I'll let them introduce themselves and also share what you do here at Menla. Sure. Thanks for that lovely introduction. <laughs> uh, my name is Ruta Gokhale, and I've been working here at Menlo as a high-tech anthropologist since December. So it's been about five months now, and I'm really enjoying my time. Part of my job is basically to go out talk to people how they use apps or softwares and try to design products or like basically technology that will help them and help them achieve them what they want to do. Wow, so you're a researcher and a storyteller. Yes, you could call that. It's, <laughs> it's sort of like I would say that part of my job involves technology, people and design. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> how about you, Jay? Yeah, I am very happy. I just started back here on Monday, today's Wednesday, but I um, was a seasonal employee here last summer. So I worked here for four months and then in between, I finished my graduate degree at the School of Information. And so I'm very overjoyed really that I get to come back and work here. At, at the, the University of Michigan or elsewhere? Yep, yeah, University of Michigan. So you grew up in Ann Arbor? Yeah, born and raised in Ann Arbor. Ruta, how about you? I spent most of my life in India in a city called Pune. And after I finished my undergraduation, I came to Michigan at, um, and did my master's in human-computer interaction from the same school, which is University of Michigan School of Information. And up until yesterday, right, you had yeah. not known each other? No. We know we met each other... About an hour oh, ago. Yes. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Ooh, sorry, I heard, I heard that wrong. I knew it, it, was, a, it was a fresh introduction. Uh -huh. yeah. So the two of you are new teammates. You've met an hour ago. And yeah. you, you, although you have each been here before, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. for your uh, summer stint, mm -hmm. and you were away for a couple of days, yeah. this is a new team. Yes, we, yes, this is the first time we've paired, paired together. Yes. And what's that like? Good. Yeah, we had fun. <laughs> I feel comfortable working with Ruta, even though I just met her. And that's got a common pairing experience. Yeah, here. yeah. Likewise, uh, likewise. And mm -hmm. I brought her up to speed with the project that we are going to be working on. We did some work on it, and we are happy to go. If we are like, if we are paired more, I'm, I'm 
happy to work with Jean. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> And I think that's the specialness of this place, and the way the the philosophy and culture、mm-hmm. that exists here invites this familiarity、mm-hmm. that allows you to maybe have your guard down a bit because you know the other person、mm-hmm. is interested and curious about you and your life. It's not just about the project. Yeah, I think that's a fair characterization. Yeah, I think here people are more. You you can have I guess your guard down a bit more because I mean people just won't really take advantage in a way that maybe they might in a、mm-hmm. in a different environment or or workspace. Yeah. Well, the other person's good、mm-hmm. is as valuable maybe as your own good.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it it's real. Yeah. yeah. It is real.、Uh, it's real. I mean, I've been here for、uh, several hours. Yeah. In my experience yesterday, that this is this is a real thing. It's not a theoretical th- thing. You know,、yeah. with you know, positive leadership or leading through joy、yeah. is not just a、uh, a pie in the sky kumbaya wish. It's no, it's happening. Yeah. And you know, it took a while actually for、yeah. me to like fully understand that and believe that、mm-hmm. every person here is truly like. Looking out for your good and the company's good, as well as their own, and maybe yeah, even yeah. more than their own. And I still think that every time that I start to doubt it a little、mm. bit, I find that I'll start to work with someone like Michelle, who is just so clearly, like, trying to communicate positively with you.、Mm. You can just see so clearly in the way that she works with you that she's looking out for you just、mm. as much as the project. And it's like, it's very honest. I don't know how to explain it really. It's authentic. It is. So auth- authenticity it is.、Yeah. comes it, to mind. Yeah, and a great example of that would be last week. I had something called as a feedback lunch. And、oh, you did. Yeah. <laughs>、oh, what、wow. is a feedback lunch? <laughs> so, so、um, a senior high tech anthropologist suggested that I ask for a feedback lunch. So he was essentially Eric was、uh, Eric suggested that, and he was essentially looking out for me.、Um, he asked me、uh, to come prepared for it. It was basically me going to a bunch of people. I invited a few people who with whom I had worked. And ask them to come tell me about what are some of my strengths and what are some of my areas of improvement. And it was a really good discussion for about an hour. And what did you learn? So I had come prepared with some of the things that I knew I need to work on, and some of the things that I like think have been like ever since I started. There was definitely an improvement, and some things which I thought, oh wait. I'm lacking behind, and those were actually some of the points that they told me as well. Like they could see improvement, and I would need to work harder on those things. And along with that, they told me what or like how I can do that. So the overall tone of the conversation was more of like, we are a team, so what can we do to help you grow? So like, let us know what you need from us, and we'll find ways to give you that. And did you find that you knew what you needed? Like you were able to just like boom articulate I, it. So one of the reasons here that we have that there is such a strong culture, or I would say strong in the sense that we don't mind giving each other feedback and we don't mind receiving it as well. So there is that attitude of self reflection I think built in from the first day onwards, or it doesn't come naturally, but. Over the past few months that I've worked, I've of course I mean I don't realize it in the moment, but because I knew I was going to go into the lunch, and Eric suggested that if I want to get more value, like it would be good to do some self reflection and come prepared so that I know what I need to work on and I know what I should be asking help for. So and that kind of helped because then people were telling me about you can do this, you can try that, and in this situation try this. So that was definitely helpful. Sounds、um, very nurturing. Oh, absolutely! And because we are so constantly paired together, and if someone like even a random like like the person who I haven't worked with before comes up to me and says, "Ruta, do you have some time? I want to like give you some feedback." I would be thrilled to receive it. Yeah. And feedback means something very different than than many of us think. Like、yes. when the, the idea of a feedback lunch in many corporate environments, or、yeah. just in many cultures,、yeah. would be negative. It would be criticism.、Yes. It means we're going to tell you everything that you're doing wrong. Yeah, and then you go figure out how to fix it. Yeah,、and、this was <laughs> this was more of like this is what we have observed. 
and this this is something that you can do and let's talk about how you can do it now the assumption yeah. is can yeah and the assumption is you can do it yes. Yes. you can grow yeah and they'll even give you very specific action yeah. items exactly. maybe even books to read yeah so that you can Things have to a try. clear path yeah. toward that growth for sure and once again you're not necessarily talking about the product this discussion up until this moment yeah. has not been about what it is that you're making. Yeah. yeah. I think there's an investment in the employee's personal growth mm-hmm. yes. that manifests in better products oh, yeah. certainly Nicely but put. like yeah. is in a certain way like truly about the employee's personal growth for its own sake. Well, because your growth, your success, it it c- completes the cycle, right? Mm-hmm. It then feeds back to the organization, yeah. and the the ROI is yeah. is greater. Yeah. It, you yes. Know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about your experience coming into this company, moving from a summer position now to full time? Mm-hmm. And the, maybe the differences or the contrast between your first experience and then the return. Well, I've only been here a couple days. But one of the things I liked about when I worked here last summer was that I was not treated like an intern. In fact, my title is not intern, but there are um, no interns. Yes. <laughs> there are no interns at Menlo Innovation. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be clear. <laughs> yeah, but like and the onboarding process there wasn't one because you would just work with a pair and that that person would help you to know what you needed to know for the day and then you would work together and uh myself as the newer person would often be learning like sort of intensively and quickly every day along with the the person that I was pair- pairing with so it it hasn't been super different yeah. now since when I was here last summer but I do appreciate it so much more because I was so used to pairing with people for 8 hours a day and then I had to finish my master's degree and I was studying and I was like where's my pair partner to help me do my homework and yeah. there wasn't one so I'm <laughs> I will say I'm somewhat relieved to be back and just being more social which I think is healthier and I think is also more productive can we say yeah. that yes. Just, yes yes we get more yes. done oh yeah absolutely like Yes. And the science really supports that. I mean, like the research science says that you know, we work better when we're in, when we're connected, when we have good social interaction, yeah. mm-hmm. where there's a climate yeah. where we're valued, yeah. you know, for what yeah. we are contributing. Yeah. And that isolation really sucks and we're really not the most productive when yeah. we are operating alone as an island. Yeah. Completely agree. Completely. Yep. Let's talk a little bit about how working here has contributed to your personal lives if we can call it that because it's just mm-hmm. your life yes. so how it's added to your life in your relationships outside of work your partners your parents mm-hmm. your your family mm-hmm. members your mm-hmm. friends community mm-hmm. service if 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 you participate mm-hmm. how the skills have translated i can say that i've become really like I really appreciate the process that we follow here. So, be it a simple thing of like writing story cards or uh, that we do here to like for clients for actual work. And when I go back home, I think about like I'm spending this time or other why am I doing this and is it giving me the value that I wanted to achieve? and if this effort is not working let me stop this work and think about an alternate way i have really started prioritizing things which i used to not do so much before i've become like um the different aspects of the process that we follow here i found them to be really like i can really apply them outside of work as well which has been really uh, like interesting and i do that um subconsciously and then i realize oh wait <laughs> Why did I not do that? And then I'm like, oh wait, because I thought it was of no value. So might as well do something more valuable in the minimum amount of time that you have and produce more value. Because time is precious. Yes. You know, there's a there's a finite mm-hmm. amount of it. Yeah. And it's what we do with it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. How about for you? Hmm. I mean, a lot of ways, really. I definitely do. 
um, sometimes approach like tasks or like especially large projects yeah. with more of a mental mindset of yeah. like okay how can I break this down into tasks or story cards and then prioritize mm-hmm. pick the one anyway and then do them and then mm-hmm. I just remember you were talking about emotional intelligence and like social intelligence yes. earlier. I think I probably strive for both of those a lot, but this environment has really only helped that grow even more. And just with like sort of skills that you would hope would be taught like in families and schools but may sort of been skipped over yeah. or you you might have gaps like in your personal life trying to think of examples I'm like a concrete thing of like just interpersonal skills or things like how to communicate better with someone I really I think gotten better at it ever since I've started working at Mendor like how to approach a difficult conversation with someone uh, because mm. you tend to work here with different personalities all day so you're like you need to modify your communication style that sort of works with your pair partner for that day or for that week so by default you're sort of learning to talk to like and talk on, and not necessarily just talk but like work really closely with people who probably share a different personality than you do so you yeah. sort of build those skills by default and then it comes to you naturally when you talk with people outside of work who are probably not like you who have a different mindset or who have a different approach to things but it becomes very easier to communicate and then have like a good conversation with someone and it almost goes back to the sandbox analogy right like when you're a little kid and you go to the park and you play yeah. in the sandbox mm-hmm. the story of those kids lives yeah. don't really matter all that matters is how you show up and play at that yeah. moment in the sandbox yeah. mm-hmm. in a sense this is on a larger scale on an adult yeah. level what goes on yeah. and the idea is to have some level of harmony and interaction and curiosity which allows the which motivates the process to move forward So I see what you're saying is being really really important. Here comes a quick break and we'll come right back. Who says money can't buy happiness? Whether you are a skeptic or seeker, check out Lisa's new book. Are we happy yet? 8 Keys to Unlocking a Joyful Life. A boot camp manual for greater emotional fitness is available at Barnes and Noble, Amazon, Indiebound, and harvestinghappiness.com. Here's a truth bomb. Emotions are contagious, and happiness is a universally desired state. But we tend to forget that we all have the freedom to be happy or the liberty to be miserable each day, regardless of external circumstances. Explore the journey of human happiness, how to find it and keep it, with Lisa's documentary film, H Factor. Where is your heart? Visit HarvestingHappiness.com to learn more. talking with team members over at Menlo Innovations about the culture of inclusiveness, equality and joy that reigns supreme over at Menlo Innovations and how Joy Inc um and that is the culture and book that Rich Sheridan has written and has co-manifested with his partner James Gobel that really lives on at Menlo Innovations. Let's get back to the conversation with these team members. I've I've found myself doing self reflection a lot more, and it wasn't that someone told me to do it. It's just that I've naturally found myself doing it, and that is when I've started realizing, oh wait, is there like a before and after Menlo sort of a phase? <laughs> <laughs> the Menlo effect. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> right? That yeah. I think that there is, that, from yeah. what I witness. Yeah. It's really cool to hear you talking about how you've noticed like your self reflecting more. and i've heard like bits and pieces of other people's stories like who was it i think one of the davids said that be working at menlo changed his life like 
he was he was posting on Facebook about I think, job opportunities, and he was like, "This is a life changing thing." And so it's not just you; it's not just me. Yeah. Like it, it really is. It does have that effect on many, many people. Yeah. <laughs> and the culture is bred or incubated because the the co-founders they had a vision of how they imagined a corporation could be or could work yeah. mm -hmm. you know to have you know have the vision no we, we don't want a place where widgets are just made we want a yeah. place where humans are accepted and embraced for the totality of yeah. what they bring to the team yeah. and just for who they are yeah. and that's a very unique mindset one that interests me very yeah. much clearly you know it's, <laughs> it's fascinating and mm -hmm. and the um positive proof positive results of what you guys create here i mean there's high level stuff going on yeah. in this basement <laughs> and i want yeah, to remind the listeners that we are sitting in a basement yeah. yeah and i would say the best part for me was like no one like on my first day no one told me like gave me a formal training about this is the culture at menlo it was more of like my partner was leading with example he was showing me how mm -hmm. he or her was showing me how to be a menlonian just by being and yeah. as i st and over time i sort of picked up behaviors and patterns and things that were like mm -hmm. oh wait this is how you do it and yeah. i'm now going to yeah. do this yeah. next time because it makes sense yeah not because you're being forced to no, do it to you're fit not, in you're not, not even being told to do yeah. it yeah. it's more like you watch someone else do yes. it and it's so effective yes that you can't help but yep. try to imitate it. Yeah. And that's the beauty of self-discovery. I think what environments like this do is allow us as people to discover more of who we are yeah. and show yeah. up with that. Cuz I know? think and then like the also the beauty of like self-discovery and realizing you can change and you can have mm -hmm. healthier and better communication yeah. styles and yeah. it is possible and people and because people encourage it and are intentional about it i think there's almost like a i don't like the word safe space but like almost like a it's okay to try new communication styles and like to do that sort of vulnerable work of yeah. sort of putting yourself out there in new yeah. ways right? oh yeah like people would like i i'm called, like if i wanted to try something new i would mm -hmm. not be afraid um in trying it out in front of these people out here. Yeah. So so risk, healthy risk taking. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. Which is how we grow. Yeah. Yeah. And if we're not willing to take any risk, then we sort of become stagnant and kind of die die in the in the water. Mhm. Mm yeah. <laughs> and it's hard though. I mean, yeah. I you know, I think we all naturally go, okay, I want to protect what I have, yeah. but you have to push yourself to do things that are scary. You just you have to, and you never regret it. I don't think. Yeah, and otherwise you're not going to grow or learn. Right. Well, isn't it true though? At the end, at the end of the day, we don't regret the things that we have done. We yeah. regret the things that we haven't. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Right. <laughs> so if we don't try, yeah, you know then we'll never know. Then mm -hmm. it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy like, you know, yep, I knew I couldn't do it. Well, do never <laughs> if you never buy the lottery ticket, you never stand to win. Yeah. yeah. Mhm. Mm mm -hmm. And um this is a winning environment to positively challenge oneself to to grow and expand and risk and play. There's a lot of play going on out there. It's <laughs> <laughs> a lot of laughter. Here. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of laughter. We like to joke around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is there anything else you can think of you'd want to add about your experience or I just think that the culture is so healthy here. Like that's a word that I use a lot when I speak with friends about it. I just think like I think this is honestly an example of how human relationships can and should look like. Yeah. And I mean we're all people like yeah. well I think this is more possible than people realize. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. And how to teach this, you know, I don't know that you can bottle it, but in a sense package it and yeah. be able to show others that whatever industry you're in yeah. that this is possible. Yeah. That mm -hmm. this is not exclusive to the software club. That yeah. it it, it mm -hmm. scales up, yeah. it scales down, it scales yeah. in, it scales out. Yeah. It can work in every way, you know, acad academia. I mean, I'm looking at the industry domains 
um, which Menlo serves in some of the projects that you have worked on. I mean, I can just give a smattering of it. Um, built technology for testing autonomous vehicles, designed a savings app for millennials, um, provided agile transformation coaching, <laughs> designed and built an app for IVF treatment management, it's in vitro fertilization treatment mm -hmm. management, designed and built an organ transplant information system, added features to a golf simulator product, built a high altitude photography tracking app. There's a oh, di yeah. diverse yeah. range of very high level work that yeah. goes on here. It's, it's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. Built on a vision. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And there is this one sort of thing that we keep on saying that you might hear very much around Menlo is we say run the experiment. We I love that. it. No, but I, I love it. Run the experiment. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's it's basically like you said, like you don't have to make a big change at one time. You can start with smaller increments and just do it and see how it goes. And if it doesn't work fine but if it works out it's great and even if it doesn't work try making modification and learn from that and see what might work next so it's always sort of like let's do it attitude and see what happens show up <laughs> yeah <laughs> show up do the work and, and yeah see the magic <laughs> yeah <laughs> well you know and I, I have to say and I would love for this to be part of the recording that um for 10 years I've and I mentioned this to you I've been in a studio recording this show first yeah. we had it was a live show that then went to podcast and then it went to pre-recorded and we now are we do podcasts we're on traditional terrestrial radio mm -hmm. and I have not stepped out of the studio yeah. to engage and in, in do interviews and this is like that first test yeah. and it's like if who knew? Yeah. You know, I had one way of doing it and I've been very successful at doing yeah. at it. But to step out and yeah. run, run the experiment, I'm like, <laughs> this is so cool. <laughs> you know, I could just travel and you do could. this yeah. all day. Yeah. I could. could. And why not go to companies and run the experiment? Like, why does this work? What is it? And it, it comes down or comes always comes back to the human heart and humanity. That's why yeah. it works. You know? Yeah, the people have a very good understanding of human nature here and also like a very realistic expectation mm -hmm. for people to change and grow. Like yeah. we talked about feedback lunches. I don't think any of our coworkers expect us to like I don't know, like fix our number one area for growth within 2 months. Like yeah. I don't think yeah. people have that kind yeah. of ridiculous. Yeah. Like they know that it's a slow sort of it's, and, yeah. you know, you'll laugh along the way. And yeah. I love that about yeah, this place. Yeah, for sure. And it's it's more of like, if you're taking time, what can we do so you can go faster? Yeah. Well, you're planting the seeds. I think the acknowledgement of the area of that you want to improve upon or learn more about by just having that seed in consciousness is probably halfway there already. Yeah. I think so, yeah. Yep, that is, I would say that's very true. I sort of have this theory of like, okay, so for me that the, the mm -hmm. feedback lunch was like very, I guess emotional, because I was really scared of it. Oh. Even though I knew, you know, people yeah. had told me it'll be fine. I, I hadn't experienced it before, so mm. I was very unsure of how it was going to go. But then, of course, it was like a very nurturing sort of environment, mm. and people like, giving me ideas for growth, but in such a way that I knew that they deeply cared about me as a person. I think part of my theory is, is that like that sort of radical acceptance of you where you're at can even lead you to growing in those places that you might be trying to grow in in the first place. Mm -hmm. Because it's yeah. sort of like an overall healing, right? Yeah. And so like if you have that knowledge that people do care deeply mm -hmm. about you, you sort of have like the space and personal freedom to move from move on from the past and like yeah. just sort of this holistic growth and healing. Yeah. Does that make any sense? Yes, because I think what I'm hearing you say is that you feel cradled and cradle is probably not the right word. It's too baby like, but sure. like like uh, embraced or yeah. held. There's a yeah, net. I Maybe would, there's I a would net. say that. Yeah. yeah. And it's funny because like I always have this tension when I talk about it because these words like, enc like encouraging and like cradling, like they can seem 
at least to me and like to the way I grew up, mm -hmm. sort of like in infantile, mm -hmm. but I don't actually believe that those are like babyish things. I, I actually believe that like it's a, those things are very core for people to grow and, and, and thrive. What's well, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? That, that when you look at, if you heard of the, the Maslow's needs, it's built on a triangle that the foundation yeah. is sort of food, shelter, and yeah. safety. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have those things, there is no way you could possibly reach self-actualization. Because mm -hmm. if you're just worried about your basic safety, like, is my, am I stable? Am I in a stable environment? Yeah. yeah. You can't get up there. You can't be the best uh, actualized yeah. person because yeah. mm -hmm. you're so worried about your survival. Yeah. So, and maybe the better way to look at it is that, that your survival, your basic needs of being sort of looked after, respected, mm -hmm. and valued mm -hmm. are met, which then allows you to risk. Yeah. Yes. Yep. And that's totally. where the growth comes, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. That's where you run the experiment. Yeah. Because you can. Yeah, because you can, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. being able to say, I don't know, you know, and not have Oh, yeah. Like, have it, it was something new for me when I started, like, out and this was in fact one of the feedbacks that I got was that be okay with <laughs> saying I don't know it's completely fine yeah like you will find people who might know the answer <laughs> or we can find the answer together yeah you hope you don't know the answer all the answers because if you know all the answers yeah. then you're never going to really stretch yourself yeah you True. won't grow if you know yeah. all the answers you can't you yeah. can't yeah Mm -hmm. So we're running the experiment. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> I, think, I think Rich and, and James need to get a t-shirt made with that says that. We have a, a poster of it somewhere. Yeah. But like a, a Menlo t-shirt or a cap, <laughs> run the experiment. Mm -hmm. There are, I think, some stickers available that say run the experiment. I'm going to see if Anna can find one for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I put it right like on here somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Anything else you want to add? Not right no, now. No. I th I'm just so happy that you like are here and trying to sort of like spread the so, message yeah. or the yeah, absolutely mm. the way of working. I think if more people knew about it, they would want in. The, yeah, yeah, they would want into the club. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I do, and I don't know anything about this industry. I'm like, huh, I could just find a cozy spot for myself <laughs> yeah. here, you know? Yeah. yeah. So if, yes, thank you. Thanks for joining us on Harvesting Happiness. This is Lisa Cypress-Kamen and my guests today, Ruta Gokhail, Jane Zielkowski, Dan Roman, and Scott Crumroy, wishing you kind thoughts, kinder words, and the kindest of actions. Until next time, remember, happiness is an inside job. Happiness is your inside job. Go out and rock your day. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay joyful. Keep harvesting your own happiness anytime and anywhere from the comfort of wherever you are. Subscribe, listen, and share hundreds of downloadable episodes via our free app or from our libraries at toginet.com, iTunes, Google Play, and other fine podcast platforms. To learn more about Lisa's global consulting services, please visit harvestinghappiness.com. Spread more joy by liking us on Facebook at Harvesting Happiness and following Lisa on Twitter at Lisa Kamen. Harvesting Happiness is produced in collaboration with TogiNet Radio, KBUU RadioMalibu.net, and is available on PRX, the public radio exchange.